Hello there, this is Dr. Murphy. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Take this minute and get a refreshing to hear this particular piece. I, I want to read this piece to you, and it's by Edgar A. Guest. And I've had this a while, but I feel like it'll be a blessing to you if you want to tune into what I'm trying to say in regards to shifting. We need to shift, shift straight to faith where fear has overpowered us. And so listen to this, and then I'm going to get into this message really quickly. It says, the name of it is called Myself. It says, I have to live with myself, and so I want to be fit for myself, to know. I want to be able, as days go by, always to look at myself straight in the eye. I don't want to stand with the setting sun and hate myself for things I've done. I don't want to keep on a closet shelf a lot of secrets about myself and fool myself as I come and go and just thinking that somebody else will know the kind of man I really am. I don't want to dress up myself in shame. I don't want to go out with my head erect. I want to deserve all men's respect. But here in the struggle of fame and self, I want to be able to like myself. I don't want to look at myself and know that I'm blustering, bluff, and empty show. I can never hide myself from me. I see what others may never see. I know what others may never know. I never can fool myself, and so whatever happens, I want to be self-respecting and conscious free. You know, it's a sad thing. A whole bunch of people don't, don't have a clear free conscious. Why? Because they're sitting in the midst of fear. If there's ever been a spirit that has destroyed mankind today and it's constantly raging in the hearts of men and children and people who are doing things out of the spirit of fear, you know, and in the, in the society that we live in today, if you think about it, the more complex things are getting with technology and the way society is looking so, so you know, such a bloodshed today, let me turn this music down. It has become so, you know, so hard for people to really grasp faith. But I want to share the part about, you know, the issues as families and churches begin to have these issues of lack and uh, so much torment and testing with marriages and so much fear of what may happen. Because, you know, as we grew up uh, as, as kids, there were so many things that were said to us, especially when we were kids in school or dealing with our peers and we may have had this fear of rejection or we had this fear of being made a fool of or failing or you know, feeling rejected or the fear that we may be criticized or our parents may say we're too lame or lazy or whatever. You know, we have this fear that we had to come up to or meet up to a thing. You know, I mean, we find leaders doing that today, taking uh, different types of classes or getting titles that they don't even fit. I'm going to keep that real. You know, moving into this type of dimension to try to say that they're strong, you know, that they're wise and yet they're full of fear. Mm, I know I'm talking to somebody. And so I, I want to slow this down because this is this is in my heart today, and I want to talk about these two dominant fears. And these two dominant fears are the ones that are shutting down the body of Christ with faith. That means we're not going to move in faith; we're going to move in the flesh. And when we move in the flesh, we lose our light of faith. I know I'm talking to somebody who's desperately trying to find an answer on what to do about a situation, who's desperately trying to seek a way out of something that's crippling them emotionally. And I want to talk to you right now. I remember when I was coming up as a girl, and I think I told y'all on one other message, one of the things I feared getting on the school bus, sometimes I'd rather miss the bus and walk to school, because when I got on the bus, either get off the bus, the kids would always, my teeth was trying to kind of protrude it out, and the kids would always go, hee hee, he, ha ha, you know, like that song on that donkey. But I, I'm telling you, that just, it just devastated me. I, I didn't know what to do. I, I didn't know whether or not it was some days that it rained or whatever, that I, if I could walk to school. I just did not want to hear them torment me emotionally with the name calling, you know, the beaver teeth and that kind of thing, the buck teeth. But I'm talking to you right now, Pastor. I'm talking to you right now, elect lady. I'm talking to you right now, Evangelist. Any one of you in the five fold. I know I'm talking to somebody. I'm trying to slow the thing down. Mm. But unless you think about this issue, the first one I talked about is rejection. Like, no, this dominant fear of rejection, what it does, like I said before, it pushes you back and say you're not good enough. You don't know how. You don't qualify. Mm. I know I'm talking to somebody. And if we can ever do anything in this hour, so many kids 
or, or just getting off the chain with my court cases that I constantly get with these kids who are angry. And that's just like leaders and people today. They're angry. This is why they do what they do. That's why marriages are being destroyed. That's why church doors are, are closing up and people leaving the church. Why? Because they feel rejected. Mm, my God, I'm trying to slow this thing down. But back to like I said before, we're talking about the fear. The first dominant fear is rejection. And because rejection is such a, 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 a one that pulls and tugs so hard at us, this spirit really, really makes so many people sick. They fear rejection. It's one thing to be rejected, but the fear rejection is another thing. And so they, they won't do anything. They won't move into anything. I want to give you a couple of issues that uh, that's at hand uh, as far as manifestations are concerned that will cause people to uh, be in this fearful mode. And so what happens is the first thing that you can see as a trigger is that they fear to make decisions. They don't want to make a decision because they fear that it's going to be the wrong one. And most of the time when they fear that is because they're not in the face of God. And I'm telling you right now, if you're listening to this message, in order for you to shift from fear to faith, you're going to have to look, stand cold, cock in the devil's face and say, you are plain stupid. I believe God and not you. Mm, I got, I'm getting hot up in here now. I'm not, I'm not trying to fan on something. And then the second thing is that they fear, you know, to react. That they fear, uh, oh, sorry, that their fear causes them to react rather than act. I mean, sometimes they'll sit back and they'll be slumber. They won't do anything. It's lay around, won't make a decision. Things get later time, get later things get worse. And they just can't make a decision. And then when they do make them a decision, they listen to the devil. It's the wrong one. Mm, I know I'm talking to someone. That's why they are paralyzed. By the spirit of fear and rejection. And the third thing is uh, it produces the tendency to withdraw. That means to a place to feel safe from harm, uh, a false sense of mental state that represses uh, consideration of any problem that causes the, the fear to induce even more, uh, a situation of safety where duties and responsibilities can be performed without fear or exposure or negative evaluation. So they rather get somewhere where they don't, have, they don't have to be evaluated by anybody. They don't want word, have no kind of negative opinions. So they'll push themselves back out of that atmosphere. Mm. And then they get into a situation of safety where duties and responsibilities can be performed without fear or exposure of this uh, negative evaluation. And then situations surrounded by people they perceive as non-threatening. So they'll go there. Then fear keeps them from being stretched or made vulnerable. Uh, they tend to be hindered to reach their full potential. We see so many people today who have a call in their lives that they cannot reach the full potential because of the spirit of rejection or the fear of being rejected. So they won't go out and or, or get any education or won't, you know, announce that they know that the call in their lives is here to get the mentoring or the help. So they just stay stagnated. The baby is just in the in the, in the spiritual birth uh, canal and they do not grow. The baby die. I know I'm talking to somebody. And then fear causes us to become uncomfortable embarrassed or self-conscious that we become hostile and defensive and I know I know a lot of people like that because they don't know what to say or don't know what to do they get cocky uh, this does not uh, say that they don't know what they're talking about but many times they feel just inferior and this causes great damage to a whole bunch of people this way because they they seem like they want to get you know unified with people but they don't have the trust they don't have the mutual trust to, co to connect with anybody because they fear being tormented with rejection and then fear induces us to erect high walls of protection around ourselves. See, therefore, this healthy interaction is totally impossible. Why? Because we don't want people to learn about or receive us in true love because we don't feel like we're worthy. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. And what I want to share even more so about some of the manifestations of this fear before I get into the second, uh, the second uh, dormant fear is that you feel restless, that you cannot be, you know, uh, you know, contained in yourself. You feel like you just got to just move to, to make sure you're doing something to look, you know, and look like you're, you know, working on something or you are somebody. And then the second thing, you have a stillness that make the rest of your uh, family members or the church members uh, feel so extremely uncomfortable. And then you have this low level of self-esteem. Uh, this person need constant reinforcement. Uh, they have this body language that portrays an arrogance or self-conceit about themselves, and they always got everybody at arm's length. 
uh, they're very excessive in their movement of their hands. They got, you know, they have this silent uh, message within their face or their continents that says that I found all of you and all of this beneath me or beneath my need or my involvement. They are very cocky and they think that they're so high and mighty. Why? Because they fear rejection. There's too many more for me to go through because I don't want to keep this message too long, but I did want to get off into this other part in just a few minutes on the second dormant fear. But I want to leave this last one with you. They have this need to uh, have this excessively uh, need to touch people or to communicate or to draw close sometimes to certain people to gain reassurance or approval. And those people, I call them sap suckers. They're going to draw close. Why? Because they fear rejection. So they want to keep drawing close and sapping off of your strength or your faith. And they have none for themselves. Now, the second thing in this dormant a place of fear is change. Oh my God. We as a people have been hurt, abused, rejected, abandoned, betrayed, deceived, disappointed. Oh my God. And, and to the point that we just unconsciously find ourselves worried about change, ignoring change, rebelling against change. You know, and as we want to think about this situation and, and really give us some, some, some clear thought, there's nothing in the world that's unchangeable. But we've got to know that even ourselves change. I'm telling you right now, I'm changed. I gain weight. You know, and I know you might got some issues that you still change about. My hair got like gray. You know, we're changing whether we want to or not. You can put all that color you want. But things are changing. And therefore, we must face the fact that the only thing that is going to be constant in this life, in our own physical lives, that we're going to be changing that need from the old man to the new man, that means that the only unchanging thing is God and his word. And we got to recognize that though we've been hurt, though we've been rejected, though all these things that happened to us, and we're tired of being hurt, and so this change, we might as well face it. People are changing husbands and wives. People are changing their own sexual identity. Oh, change is just inevitable. And so, but is it right for us to change? Oh, most definitely it's right. Why? Because we can never get too comfortable in any issue, in any lifestyle, you know, any position of leadership. Why? Because we got to remember that our name is destiny. We are destined for likeness of our Abba. That means when you're destined, that means, and, and in a shortness, that means you have a destiny. And destiny means to be predetermined or what? Inevitable of this course of events or this considered way beyond the power of our control. Mm, my God, I know I'm talking to somebody. And this, in, in, this inevitableness means that it's incapable of being avoided or prevented. That means this is a change beyond your control, change beyond your position or your moving around about it. But the life controlling issues that we face every day in our lives, the things that we have to face from a, you know, for whatever trauma we went through, whether it was a child who an issue or not, we gotta know that those places that we've been too comfortable in, uh, we've gotta fight our way out of it. We gotta fight our way to faith. We gotta shift. And right in the devil's face, we gotta remind him that, as, as uh, Psalms 118 says, that there shall what? That I shall live and I shall not die. 118, 17 says, I shall live and not die, but live and declare the works of the Most High God. So the devil wants you to, 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 to contemplate that you're dying. You're dying in the natural, you're dying in the spirit, but change. It's going to happen. We hate change. Yes, we do. Change is everywhere. And what? This fear of change will sometimes be so unpleasant that people will find themselves wanting to leave here. Yet we cannot stop change because change is everywhere. Now, this message, as we know in the Word of God, will never change. We may give different methods to the Word, but the Word will never change. Change is painful. And you got to recognize the fact that even though it's painful, God wants to shift us. Mm, my God. He wants to shift us out of fear to faith. Why? Because it gives us fear to growth. Now, I, I, I've done this to say, you know, many people have been afraid to come up to people and share about what they feel, you know, concerning the situation. Maybe you're being challenged on your job. Maybe you're being challenged at the church. Maybe you want to leave the church because you see some things that God is moving you into, you know, into another dimension. But this shifting from fear to faith may be just a transition. That's a real key word. Maybe just a transition, what? or a transitional season, or a restoration season, because many people have been hurt by the church, and that doesn't mean that you have to just go away from the body, but you might need to go and transition yourself somewhere just to get healed, and then maybe you can see if God is sending you that. But fear is a signal word of transition. That's why we don't like it. Why? Because it's moving away from something that we're familiar with. But we've got to realize 
we can change, but we got to watch the way we change. Now, I'm going to be sending a message soon on one of the greatest things that's needed today. So many people stay stagnating. They're in churches or they're having relationships that they need not be connected with. And they don't want to transition out. They don't want to change. But see, I'm going to send a message out soon. I want you to watch that for that people need to know. They need to know how to transition from a church gracefully and respectively. We got so many people that leave a church, they talk about the past, they talk about the first lady, they talk about everybody in the church, and they're mad because they've been wounded or been rejected and wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, weren't allowed to do anything in the church or whatever, they've been set down, whatever reason that was. Or they're just mad at the pastor. But I'm telling you right now, you better keep your mouth off those pastors and those leaders, and the most important thing you can do is get some understanding from the great I am about what is he saying to you during this transition. And what is he trying to get you to do for restoration? Now, trying to slow it down. And I want to leave this message to you before I close. I wanted so bad to keep this message short. Because my main goal, as I said before, is to make sure you get restored. It's to make sure you understand the tricks of the devil. See, he wants us to think that it is wrong for us to go through a change. How can you grow? It's just like saying you're nine months pregnant and you don't want the baby to come out. That's change. The baby has got to come out of your womb. I, I mean, out of your, out of, yeah, out of your womb. But the problem is that the people have been penetrated so much with fear, the fact that they don't believe God for anything anymore. They believe the devil. They believe the arm of man. Mm, yeah, let me read that one in Psalms 118. The Bible says, Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I call upon the Lord in distress, David said. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Here you go. It is better, verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't trust the pastor because he's standing in the stead of our God. He's a set man. But what, what it is that some people put their full trust in man. He said, don't put no confidence in man. Why? Because we're frail. And he said, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Now, listen to me. A lot of the reason why so many people are in this shifting, uh, in this position of fear is because they don't shift because they're in the wrong company. See, let's look at Psalms, uh, Psalm 1. Psalm 1 says, blessed, see, that's the key word, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in what? In the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. See, we got to recognize that this scornful mentality, people that are scornful, they look down on people, they don't know how to talk to people. They're very angry. They have a, a, a horrible mentality of how they speak to people. you got to recognize this scornful type of relationship. They're very dishonorable. What? They're persecutors. They're, what? they're just blatant. They're open, blatant, disrespectful. They despise people and look down on people that may be honorable, that may be going somewhere. But you want to be running with this type, and you expect God to bless you and give you stronger faith. Why? You're in the midst of those scornful type of people who is keeping you from keeping your faith charged. What can they do for you? They're scornful. Then the second verse says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law do what? He meditate day and night. That's the key right there. The word. Meditate on the word so it can get down in your spirit. So you know how to read the devil his rights. And then kick the devil of fear out and get impregnated with fear of once again. Because once things start to challenge you, you're going to shift from faith to fear. And you're going to recognize that the devil has tricked you again so that you cannot get what God is trying to get, get to you. Why? Because he wants you to trust man. He wants you to trust yourself. He wants you to see what you can do on your own. Mm, I know I'm talking to somebody. What? But he said in verse eight, three. I mean, verse three. He said, "And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit." What? In his season, not nobody else's season. The Lord's season. And what? And his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. And so I just bless God today that. I've given you the opportunity to recognize the fact that you've got to shift. No matter how much it hurt, no matter how much it seems not right, but in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to get a grip. Think about what God has promised us. Think about what God has shown us over and over and over again, that he would never forsake us 
and never leave us. Don't ever think that God has left you. Sometimes he'll allow things to happen so that we can grow. So that we can grow and go. But if there's anything that you can do in this hour is to remember what Isaiah 58 and 9 says. He said that when you cry, that he will answer you. And you got to know that. Whatever decision you're trying to make, whatever things you feel like you need to do, you got to know that your faith is going to be the only thing that's going to move the hand of God. God loves to be trusted. you got to take fear and tell fear to go. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of fear even now. I pray for that one that is in restoration or that one that, Lord God, is in transition. I pray, God, you give them soundness of their mind. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding so they will know what to do, how to do it, where to go, Father. I pray, God, you put a blood-bought soldier, Father, by their, I mean, in their path that they may know how to intercede with them, Father. I pray, God, for that hurt that they may have from the church, God. I pray, God, for the thing that's so deep-seated in their heart, God, that they can't think all they see is fear. All they see is just no way out. But Father, I plead the blood of Jesus even now. I oh my God. I plead the blood of Jesus over your situation. Maybe there's a decision you need to make concerning money. Maybe there's a decision you need to make concerning your marriage. Maybe there's a decision you need to make concerning your job. Maybe there's a decision you need to make even now that you don't know what to do concerning your finances. But Father, I plead your blood even now. My, 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 my. Get up over this situation. I pray for a shifting even now from fear to faith. I plead the blood of Jesus to the rest in the room where you are now that your faith has increased, and that you believe God and not the devil. We thank you, Lord, for opening heaven even now, that you're doing supernatural miracles, signs and wonders over their lives, and they shift, at all Sunday, as they shift and cast out fear and grab hold of faith. We thank you, Lord, at all Sunday, that no weapon and no word form shall prosper. We thank you, Lord, that everything that they put their faith in you for, High your little Sunday, then it shall come to pass. We give you praise in this hour. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that victory is theirs. High your little Sunday, because they believe you. We love you, Abba. And we trust you, Lord, that greater are you in them than they that are in the world. And we thank you that you're Lord and you're King over everything and everybody. Be Lord again today for that one that says, Yes, Lord! And no to fear, but yes to faith. Oh, it's up to you today. God bless you. Tell fear the G.O. And tell faith to come on in and suck and have a divine way with your life. You'll see so much fruit. You'll see so many things that God is there to do for you. It's up to you. God bless you.